Okay, so this is um, exercise 1618, and it's um, Arnold Industries has pre-tax income of 32 million for the year ended December 31st of 2021. The tax rate is 25%. The only difference between accounting income, which I refer to as book income, and taxable income relates to an operating lease in which Arnold is the lessee. The inception of the lease was December 28th of 2021. An $8 million advance rent payment at the inception of the lease is tax deductible now, but for financial reporting purposes represents prepaid rent expense to be recognized equally over the four year lease term. In other words, we're getting a deduction for this now and over uh, the course of the next four years, we'll be taking an expense for gap purposes that we won't have for tax purposes. And we will have higher taxable income than book income. So our tax expense will not be as much as we actually pay. We pay more in those later years. So let's, let's record these journal entries. So in 2021, we have a prepaid rent that's going to be debited for eight million. Um, and that's going to be a debit here and a credit to cash for eight million. And again, that's uh, debit and credit. And then at, uh, that's at the end of tw uh, December 12, 28, 21. And then for uh, at the end of 2022, we're gonna do this. We're gonna have a debit to rent expense and a credit to prepaid rent. And this is going to be for book purposes only, 2 million and 2 million. Uh, again, we'll debit this and I mean, make that like there. And we will copy that. That's to 2022. We'll do it again in 23, 24, and 25. And so, um, Those, those are the journal entries for gap purposes that are causing this, what we for, refer to as a temporary or timing difference. Uh, as a result of, of this, we have, um, and, and another way to look at it is we have this um, years, 2021, 2022, Copy that three, four, five, like this, and we have advance rent that's deductible for reversing. And the deductible part is going to create a a negative effect on our taxable income. And it's going to reverse as a positive effect. That's going to go like, like this. And it's going to have a tax effect, the tax rate is 25% in all years. It's not always that way, but it is isn't. It is now in this particular case. So that the tax effect, it, it, tax it, is that we have, we're gonna save two million this year, and that's gonna reduce the tax payable that we have uh, but then in later years, it's going to 
reverse around. And so um, we're going to have this reversal effect. In effect, we're going to have to pay higher, higher cash taxes because relative to our book income tax expense because we've already taken that deduction uh, for our tax return when we paid it. And so that's going to be this number right here. So let's do number one. It says, um, and I'm going to put this in here like this. I'm going to spread this out. Um, and the first one is one this is 12, 31, 21. It doesn't think that's wide enough. And here we're going to have a credit to income tax payable. And that's going to be for 25% times 8 million, I'm sorry, 32 million, which is our book income, minus this $8 million deduction. So our taxable income is 24 million. And we'll pay 25% or 6 million. We will, and I'll, I'll make these all in uh, those comma. You're going to have a deferred tax payable. And that's going to be equal to the sum. It's going to be equal to this number plus this number plus this number plus this number. And notice we're assuming 25% across all of those years. But if there was a change in the tax rate, that, that that's going to affect that. And our income tax expense is the plug. And that's going to be equal to the sum of the tax payable plus the deferred tax payable. Total of eight million. And this is our to accrue income income taxes at year end. And that was at the end of 12 of 2021. And that's number one. Number two says determine the amounts necessary to record Arnold's income taxes for 2022 and prepare the journal entry, um, the appropriate journal entry. Pre-tax accounting income was 50 million for the year ended 2022. So we have um, 2022 pre-tax accounting income, 2022 pre-tax accounting income, and that is given as 50 million. Like that. 50 million and we're going to have a, um, a two million dollar reversal add reversal effect of prepaid rent 
and that's going to be this reversal up here that's going to reverse around and it's it's having a positive effect on book income okay or I'm sorry on taxable income it gives us taxable income and so we're going to have the total 50 million plus 2 equals 50 $2 million of taxable income in 2022 taxable income. Okay. And 2022 tax payable is going to be equal to the 52 million times 0.25 13 million and so that that answers our question here so we're going to have 12 31 22 we're going to have income taxes I have this um, brace on my finger here and it causes me to miss I's and K's. Income taxes payable. That is going to be equal to this 13 million right here. We're going to have a deferred tax payable. And that's going to be equal to this 500,000 right here equal to 500,000 here and we have income tax expense which is going to be equal to the 13 million minus the 500,000 12.5 million and there there lies our income tax expense now it comes up and it says, assume a new tax law is enacted in 2022 that causes the tax rate to change from 25% to 15% beginning in 2023. So now, instead of these being, so I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy this all down, copy that, I'm going to start for the next one. This is, that was for number two. And now I'm going to do number three. And it says a, a new tax law is enacted in 2022 that causes the tax rate to change from 25 to 15% starting in 2023. And in those cases, what we're saying is, all right, this is going to be 15%. And it's going to be 15% on out for those three years. And now it says, all right, do the new accounting entry. Um, the reversal effect, this is all this, this is all okay. 2022 tax payable is going to be 13 million. But we now have this T account out there. So where we had deferred tax liability. Um, it was this deferred tax liability it, the balance was 2 million here so I'm going to take that credit this is equal to the original 2 million from the end of 2021 12 31 21 and we're assuming we're not going to use this 2022 and says assume a new tax law is enacted in 2022 
and it says, well, how much should this be, this new taxes that we have that are going to be paid in 2023, um, 4, and 5? So what that's saying is that we've got a bottom border here, and this should be equal to our expected tax payments going out in the future based upon tax rates that were in effect at the end of 2022. And this is the 12-31-22 uh, liability based on tax rates at 12-31-22. So we know that those tax rates are going to go down to 15%. Therefore, we're going to need a debit here for the difference, 2 million minus 900,000. And so when we do this in number three, we are assuming that tax rates decline from 25 percent to 15 percent starting 1 1 23 so going from 25 to 15 starting at the beginning of 2023 and that's the case then our income tax is payable well that's still going to be the same 13 million right here because the tax rate up until the end of 2022 did not change. And this is at 12.31.22. We have this deferred tax payable. Well, that's going to be adjusted for this 1.1 million. Because the new equals this 1.1 million debit to deferred tax payable. Why? Because the 100, 900,000 represents this new liability. It's no longer $500,000 a year based upon 25%. It's now only $300,000 a year for three years, 900,000. To get our liability to go down, we need to debit it for 1.1 million. And the, the plug, income tax expense, is the difference here 13 million minus 1.1 11.9 million and that is the answer to number three the, assuming new tax law is enacted in 2022 that causes the tax rate to change um, from 25 to 15 percent starting in 2023 determine the amounts necessary to record the income taxes for 2022 prepare the appropriate journal entry. I didn't put the explanation in there, um, but you could do that um, just like this and like this, and you are done. Why is Arnold's 2022 income tax expense different when the tax rate change occurs from what it would be without the change? That's because we're using a balance sheet approach to the assets and liabilities. Um, gap uses a balance sheet approach to valuing assets and liabilities. And backs into in to the income statement. I.e. income tax expense. So um, that's the important thing to remember there. And that's all that I have about a problem or exercise 1618. There you have it.